Tyler has steamrolled her way to the very top of the music industry, collecting fans and haters alike. Every other week she's scooping a Grammy or some other prestigious award, breaking a record, giving a breathtaking performance, or someone in the US is calling her an entitled uppity African or whatever. It's the works, man. <sighs> the life of a modern day international pop star from Africa, bruh. But today, let's just focus on just the music, shall we? How exactly and why did Tyler manage to drop three projects in the space of only 10 months? Buckle up, this is the no BS version. Firstly, let's compare the differences between the three projects that Tyler has dropped in the last 10 months. There's the self-titled Tyler EP, there's Tyler the album, self-titled, and then there's Tyler Plus, which is the deluxe version of the album. Tyler EP was dropped on December 1st, 2023, and it has five songs. Tyler the album was dropped on March 22nd, 2024, and has 14 songs. And then Tyler Plus was dropped on October 11th, 2024, and has 17 songs. Tyler EP has a runtime of 15 minutes and 21 seconds. The album has a runtime of 38 minutes and 29 seconds. And then the deluxe version has 49 minutes and 15 seconds of runtime. Pretty impressive. Now, when we look at the new songs that were a part of the package deal, the EP had three new songs pretty much. We knew Water and Water Remix already, on and on was released pretty much like two days before the EP was released, so I'm just gonna include it as a third new song, honestly. Tyler the album had nine new songs, so that's in addition to the five songs that were released on the Tyler EP, and then Tyler Plus has three new songs as the deluxe version. Essentially, the common songs across all three projects were Water, Truth or Dare, Butterflies, on and on and what a remix with Travis Scott. What Tyler and her team have done here is a hybrid version of what's called the waterfall release strategy. In simple terms, this is when a project is released gradually, usually single by single in cumulative fashion until it becomes a full length project. In Tyler's case, she gave us the single water, what a remix with Travis Scott, and then on and on, which were both part of the Tyler EP, like I mentioned. And then uh, she dropped intro with Kelvin Momo, jump with Gunna and Skilly Bang, and then number one with Thames on March 20th, which is just two days before the album on March 22nd. And she was teasing songs throughout anyway. All the five songs from the Tyler EP were also included on, on the Tyler album. And then recently all the songs on the Tyler album were included on the Tyler Plus Deluxe version, which had three new songs. It's not a perfect definition of a waterfall release strategy, but the principle is the same with some hybrid elements like I mentioned. The burning question remains, why? Why did she do this instead of dropping one 17 track album when it was ready? Firstly, you have to understand that after Water broke out as an international hit, Tyler had to take advantage of the momentum. Any artist would have done that. It was the chance she needed and had been working for all her career. There's every chance that she was probably already working on an album or some type of project given that she had been in the industry since 2019, dropping successful singles by the way, and didn't have a project to her name. Sooner or later she was going to have to make a plan, but what makes artists at that level quite special usually is they always have songs in the vault where they may be unfinished, not quite there for some reason. Uh, they might be good songs but don't fit into the current sound the artist is trying to build or they're done and the artist is waiting to drop at the right moment. It's not a shortage of songs. This is common practice and could be across years where they don't do anything with the songs they've already recorded. It's done for a variety of reasons but most importantly it's about timing and gives the artist massive flexibility to take advantage of career-defining moments such as water. This is where the Tyler EP comes in. 
uh, especially as a first project after international stardom. The low-hanging fruit was always to do a remix with a recognized international star, in this case Travis Scott. That was easy enough because for the most part from an execution standpoint, she didn't need him to do too much. The so song is already there. What he needed to do was to add a verse and a few things here and there. Maybe um, modify the beat slightly, but um, it bought Tyler some time. Time to work on follow-up singles and maybe an EP. Boom. Done. Next up, she would have started looking for some material in the vault that was already in the works or finished where she could test the most receptive markets to her uh, hit song either as follow-up singles or as an EP or both. Why would she do this? An EP is a great way to gauge receptiveness to a wider sound. Put three or four different types of songs, you know, that are in different spaces and put them together um, knowing that they touch on like maybe different fusions or genres and see how the market reacts to them because you can use that data to actually guide you. That's why that first EP happened. It was Tyler starting to build a musical direction influenced by the audience. And it's safe to say that Truth or Dare was the song that picked up from where Water hadn't even left off. <laughs> and then on and on together with Butterflies did uh, decent numbers. The remix was probably almost a given that was going to, you know, uh, push Water anyway. From that data, there was plenty of justification to move on to her 14 track debut album, Tyler, titled Tyler, <laughs> to do more of the fusion type of vibes that carry multiple genres, such as R&B, Afrobeats, dance or house. And of course, I'm a piano with the log drum leading the way. This made room for other songs to be included and also do well, such as Jump with Gunna and Skilly Bang, which is gunning for like 200 million streams on Spotify and is at nearly 30 million views on YouTube for the OMV. I'd also add Art and Number One with Thames as the other songs that did really well from the album, from the Tyler album. When we now look at the Tyler Plus Deluxe album, Tyler gave us three new songs. I'd say this of the three new songs. Back to You is for the R&B lovers that want that water type of feel to the vibe with a hint of Afro beats, so it occupies that space, mostly R&B really, and it does so perfectly providing somewhat of an extension from water. In my books, this is the song for the American market mostly and was designed that way. Shaker is the proper I'm a piano number to get Tyler on the South African December playlist. And I wouldn't have it any other way because she really retained the, the actual I'm a piano sound. And understandably, when you play this type of vibe, a lot of people um, outside of um, you know South Africa and uh, that are internationally based or whatever, wouldn't even consider it Ama Piano, they would think it's a different sound, but that's the real Ama Piano sound. She enlists the talents of Tony Duardo, who has quietly been behind some of the biggest Ama Piano songs of the last few years. I'm, I might do a video on this guy, honestly. I love that she also gave the platform to some relatively unknown South African names too, in the form of Optimist Music, Zere and Easy Maestro. What a fantastic opportunity for these guys and I'm pretty sure they're going to be getting a lot of production bookings for sure. Push to Start occupies that dance hall space with a bit of pop appeal and inclusion of the same formulaic makeup of the song Jump with Ghana and Skilly Bang that I mentioned earlier. There's a lot of fu fusions going on there but otherwise quite skillful. The timing of Tyler Plus is important. Water has been out for more than a year now and releasing a deluxe version definitely pushes us back to the nostalgia associated with the virality etc. In short, it gives the older songs newer legs while introducing us to new material as well. This tactic pushes for streams without a doubt. With a new release date, the album is essentially reissued and 
recommended to the algorithms which puts it in front of the audience again and in front of new listeners that may have missed it before. Smart move. We're about to get into the festive period and the timing for that is also intentional with uh, the 2025 Grammy nominees set to be announced in the next few weeks and this particular move um, of releasing the deluxe album around early October puts Tyler, especially as a 2024 uh, Grammy winner, top of mind to those people that are part of the Academy. Very smart move following the submission window as well. Another reason for deluxe albums specifically is to add songs that wouldn't have fit into the flow of the original album or weren't considered strong enough for what the team was aiming for but are still good songs regardless. This is done in consideration of award shows as well where only the original album material is considered so the deluxe won't actually mess up the chances of somebody uh, winning by including weaker songs. From the fan and critic perspective, a deluxe album won't be judged the same way because it's uh, seen as a few extra gifts the artist wanted to give their fans. So the pressure is far less and there's far less scrutiny than before and the artist can get away with more experimentation and weaker songs too. <laughs> Outside of this, other base reasons uh, could also be at play, especially when an artist is signed to a label, uh, such as contractual obligations to fulfill a certain number of EPs and albums. When that happens, the artist may choose to drop projects more frequently to either get out of a deal or renegotiate a deal. I don't believe that's the case with Tyler right now, but we have countless other examples of this happening before. But in a nutshell, yeah, that's why Tyler dropped three projects in 10 months. It was all strategic to build off of what Water has done, tear up for the 2025 Grammys, especially from uh, an album of the year perspective, and uh, also just positioning her for the future in terms of her sound and what's expected. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below and we can have a healthy discussion around it. And before I dip, I've designed some really cool African music merch that you can get on mjwemoto.com, which is mjwemoto.com. Head over there and get your African music merch. Otherwise, that's it for me. My name is MJ Omoto, son of Zimbabwe, signing out. Peace. Nandane.